exercise is not only just learning respect and trust, but part of this exercise is learning how to communicate with the dog. So you're asking them to touch that. They know how to do this. They know what you want. But they're going to say, I want you to ask correctly. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I know, huh? Okay, so I want you to take this dog, and I want you to touch that gray target over there. So shake your hand and see if you can get the dog to follow your hand. So do you have the treat in there? Nope. Okay, put a treat in there. In the beginning, we're going to have treats because we want that dog to follow that hand. So you're going to have it close to that nose. Shake that hand. You lost the communication. There you go. There you go. There you go. That's perfect right there. Good touch. Yay. That was awesome. Now, if we shake that hand and that treat's right in front of that nose, and then all of a sudden the dog goes squirrel and sees something over here, you've got to put your hand right back to that nose. What people have a tendency of doing, I promise you we're going to get to you. But what people have a tendency of doing is pulling on that leash. But when you pull on that leash, it puts pressure on the throat and you're disrespecting your dog. So you're going to kind of go backwards a little bit. Okay, so now watch your eye contact because you want the dog to focus on your hand, not your eyes. Okay, now touch one of these over here. Yep, the green and orange. Ooh, beautiful communication. Yes, great job. Now, I don't know if you guys noticed this, but when she didn't look at the dog, the dog was more focused on her hand. So the communication was more solid when she walked over there. But then you laser beamed eyes right into the dog's eyes, and now the dog is looking up at your eyes instead of your hand. So what happens is we work so hard to get this communication and it only takes a second for you to look at your dog in the eyes and you start back at square one again. Yeah, it's real. It's a hard habit to break. And if we have to, we do have some shot callers. We can, we, no, I'm only joking. <laughs> okay, so go, loose leash, no tightness at all, and touch the orange target over there. Okay, she didn't see your hand. Come back over here. So when you took off, her head was out here, and your hand was back here, okay. so she couldn't see that. So if you have a dog that wants to head out in front of you, you might want to back up so they can see that hand and lead them to that target. That. Lean forward, walk backwards. Okay, go back again. There, good. Okay, so what just happened there is she spoke dog for a second. When she leaned forward and walked backwards, that told the dog, step forward. And when you stand up, that tells them to stop. But your eye contact and even the slightest tension on that lead, she's going to say, nah, it's not going to happen. So you've got to be really careful because you've got a very, very smart dog right here. At the slightest bit of eye contact, you're going to see these smart dogs say, we're not doing this. The slightest bit of tension on that lead, you're going to see these dogs say, I'm not doing this. Okay, so you're right at the border of being really, really successful. But what's going to hold you back is that eye contact. You're getting the dog's attention on that hand, and then you look like this, and you, you blow it. Okay, try Everest over there. Look at the enthusiasm in this dog, guys. Go slower, slower. Yes, good. Now, why did I tell her to go slower? I'm reading her dog. I'm watching what's going on. And she was going, don't look. Yeah, the dog was like, what do you want me to do? And then so when I said slow down, the dog was like, oh, this is what you want me to do. And sometimes we think faster is better, and it's not. So as a trainer, I'm looking at the dog. The dog's telling me what you need to do to fix that or make that happen right there. Tell me how you communicated with your palm when you walked from there to here. I wasn't sure what I should do with my palm. Okay, your palm needs to be in the direction you're going. Okay. So your hand was like this, yeah. which wasn't saying anything. Okay. okay, so I want your palm to lead the dog to that black target. But no eye contact. Have still have a treat in there. Okay, nice and slow. 
Look at that, guys. Watch your eye contact. Let out more lead. And don't pull on the lead. He knows exactly what you want. Here's the stubborn part coming in. Yay, get excited. Good, good, good. So sometimes what will happen is they'll do it by accident. And when they do it by accident, you got to reward them because they're like, oh, she caught me. And, and, and then they'll go, oh, this was kind of fun. One okay. of the things you're doing is you're, you're luring him with the treat, and your palm direction has nothing to do with communication. Right. So he's just following the treat. Right. You want to wean him off the treat so he has to know that that palm direction is important. Okay. So, so the treat is in your hand, but your palm is facing where you want him to go. Okay. Okay? So, oh, but I'll try. so okay. take him to the black target. Your palm is not in the right direction. It's down. Up higher? Look at me. This means down, okay? This means this way. This means this way. Oh, I had it like that? You had it like this. Okay. Okay? So lead your palm yes, okay. to that target. This way. Yes. Shake your hand because he's not even knowing that you have a, a hand. Yay! Nice. Guys, if you have male dogs, do not pat them on the chest. Uh-oh. That's all I've ever been taught. Yeah. Okay. Especially if you come from horses, you know about this. That is not a good zone. This is bad touch right here because it, it gets them excited. And especially if they have bitches in season in the area, then you've lost them. So if you want to reward them, you can tell them, good dog. And that's just as much as banging on the chest like you see some people do. Really establish and maintain that communication. Nice and easy. You just want her glued to that hand. You lost her? Good. Bring her back. Almost. Don't lift up. Watch your eye contact. See, your eye contact kind of killed that one right there. Nice job. Okay, guys, I hope you caught all this right here. So he was asking pretty good, but when he added the eye contact in there, she was like, yeah, you're disrespecting me a little bit right here. So that's why she was kind of touching on the outside. But as soon as I said, watch your eye contact, what did she do? She touched it. I'm telling you, I'm not making this stuff up. <laughs> You've got to have your hands low. you got to communicate, and you're still doing the eye contact, and you just pulled her. So you're demonstrating perfectly of what I say not to do, but that's okay because these are things that you know that you have to fix right there. And look beyond her. Look to the side of her. Look at her from the corner of your eye and make sure that under no circumstance you pull tight on that leash. Um, she'll learn to get out of that. And the other thing you do too is you go like this all the way to the end. Now, if I come up, the hand height position is very important. If I come up to you in my hands like this, is that a threat? No, but if I come up to you like this, how does that make you feel? Exactly. Same, I'm telling him, I promise. But that's the same thing with your dog. If you come in and you're having your hand like this, that's not positive right there. If your hand's always low, there's no threat with that whatsoever. Okay. But when you start involving what all these other things that people are telling you to do, look at your dog, pull tight on the leash, do all this and that, then that's when you're going to go backwards in your training. And when you go backwards, you have to start here and do everything perfectly and get rid of whatever it is in that mix. And that's why the online mentorship programs are so successful, because you shoot video footage of that. And when you shoot video footage of that, I get to see 
by watching the dog what you're doing to cause these problems. And we fix that together. Good. Nope, you took off too quick. Come back. Slow. Pretend like you got a fine string of silk attached to that dog's nose. If you pull it too quickly, there you go. And touch. Nice. Good job. See the difference there, guys? Slow your world down. Pretend you've got a fine piece of silk attached to their nose. And if you go like this, what's going to happen to that silk? It's going to break. What does she need to be aware of when she's going to this black target? The dog taking over. So it's really important that you don't let the dog take over there. Yep. Watch your eye contact. You're almost there. Yes, you got it. Good. Yeah. Okay. So when she was looking at the dog, did you see the dog going, stop looking at me, and then I'll put this down. Okay. See if you can get him to touch that. Watch your eye contact. Almost. So bring your hand lower and then kind of lift it up and watch his leg lift up. So bring it closer to his face. So it's confusing because you're communicating with two hands here. So drop. <laughs> and that, I'm going to teach her this. That's not a treat. That's a crumb, huh? Yes. Okay. So, um, Craig, can you hand me, is there any more treats over there? Oh, the treat lady. <laughs> Finally. Okay, here we go. Okay. That's a little better right there. He, look at the difference in his enthusiasm now. Okay. Touch. Come on. Good. 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 Easy. 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 Good. Yes. Yes. You ready? Go ahead. Good job. Okay. Oh, good. Oh, yeah. Good. Yes. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. Yes. Yay. Yeah. So, see, you've got to get him to want to do that right there. And I'm using my body and enthusiasm and all that to get him to want to do that. Okay, okay. come back to the orange target here. Watch your eye contact. Shake your hand. Yeah. You're doing good. Yay! That was awesome. So what I want to add to your little arsenal there is that you're going to ha have to have a little more energy. Yeah, okay. Yeah, she, she wants to be, oh, oh yeah. let's do this. Guys, don't be afraid, as, even if you have a dog that has lots of energy, to just ramp them up and have fun. You can always bring them down later, but let's have fun. That's the whole key right here. Okay. It's very important that we ask correctly. We ask in a way where the dogs are understanding us, so we got to use their language. We can't use human behavior. We have to use animal behavior. And you saw today that eye contact does what? It makes them go the other direction. And it, and it doesn't take, like, eye contact for five minutes. It's eye contact for a fraction of a second. We'll make them do that. If you get frustrated and they sense any negative, oh my gosh, that's perfect. <laughs> Doesn't that feel good? <laughs> if, if they sense any negative emotion whatsoever, you go backwards. You don't have to be perfect in your training session. Passion over perfection every single time. When you want the dog to do something and it doesn't do it, who cares? The world's still going to go on. You take that treat, you throw that treat, and you end that session on a happy note right there. Then you come back and you try it again another day. 
but you will move forward. If you guys try to just force the dogs to do things perfectly, you're going to go backwards. If you do anything whatsoever to disrespect that dog, tight leash, try to be overbearing and controlling, you're going to go backwards. The tougher the dog, the smarter the dog, the more you have to find something of value of that dog. The dog has to find something of value of you. A training session could be you sitting in a chair and just ignoring that dog. And when the dog comes over, oh, there you are, give the dog a treat and ignore it again. That would be a great training session right there. You have to treat every single dog with the same respect. If you have multiple dogs in your household, you have to teach every dog like they're your favorite dog. Absolutely. And again, for many, many years, people often ask me, what was your favorite dog? And I couldn't answer that question. And later on, I figured out why. And that's because every time I had a dog in my hand, that was my favorite dog right there. And that's the way I want your dogs to feel too. Is, is it more beneficial or would it make a difference when you practice outside versus inside? I can tell you without a doubt, 100%, the more you do outside, the better your inside work's going to be. And the reason for that is because you're outside in a nice open area. This is where the dogs want to be. You have less stress. You're more fun out there. So you go out there and set up some of the same stuff or even better, find natural stuff like rocks and trees and stumps and things like that. Weave through some cones. You do whatever you want and then come back in and duplicate that with that same enthusiasm. But we focus on the wrong things. In confirmation, we focus on training the dog for months or weeks or whatever on stacking. We don't have to do that because they know how to stand. We focus on gating. If your dog doesn't know how to walk, then there's more serious issues there. <laughs> We don't have to spend all that time on stuff they already know how to do. We need to focus on the stuff that will allow us to communicate with them and tell them when to do that. And then if we establish that leadership there, then all the slow, creepy judges that come up to them won't matter anymore. It doesn't make a difference where your dog is at. They're going to be perfect, and this is why. Okay, so I'm getting my dog past my judge. Here's my judge right here, okay? So what I'm doing is I'm putting my hand in between the judge's belly button and my belly button. When I walk backwards, look what happens to my dog. See how my dog got right in front of me? Once my dog is straight, then I step away from my hand and I take my dog forward. Okay, so what I'm trying to do, guys, is I'm trying to get it to the point where you stop focusing on these dogs. Because the more you focus on these dogs, the more you're creating problems. When you just simply go over and do it, do you notice they're following the hands? That's, you're making it too complicated. Okay, you guys shift. Okay, back up. But you're turning way too quick. I know. Yeah. Can we do it again? Yes, please. I want the dogs to be straight. Okay, go past me. Back up. Go. That's much better. Still a little too quick, though. Stay back, stay straight. Now, so you're turning as you're walking back. Get their eyes. Yep. Guys, um, does anybody have a leash and a collar I can borrow for a second? It doesn't make a difference where your dog is at. They're going to be perfect. And this is why. Okay, so I'm getting my dog past my judge. Here's my judge right here. Okay? So what I'm doing is I'm putting my hand in between the judge's belly button and my belly button. When I walk backwards, look what happens to my dog. See how my dog got right in front of me? Once my dog is straight, 
then I step away from my hand and I take my dog goal. And then at that point, is the dog still in front of the judge? Yeah, look. Mm -hmm. Right in the center of that mat right there. Because that's where my hand is at. So quickly, over, get in front of me, walk backwards, turn and go. Beautiful. Now that is the role model way to do that. Okay. Back away, turn and go. Look at this, guys. Okay, get her back to me. Get in front of me, back up and go. Do the cone, palm out, palm back. Go around, hit a target, and that's how it's 